Hi there, Tom. I think you know who this is. This is Jonathan from the corner office down the hallway from you. Um, I have so many happy memories of working with you, and I have so much to thank you for in terms of the advice you've given me over the years. So the one thing I wanted to say today is that you may remember in the early days of the merger, you used to refer to us as the Fleming guys. Well, uh, I was never going to allow you to get out of here and retire until you got out of the habit of calling us the Fleming guys, and I'm happy to say that it's been several years now since I've heard you say that. So, on behalf of the Fleming guys, that would be Eitan Shapiro, uh, Tim Parton, Claire Hart, and me, I think we all are grateful to you for the partnership we've had, and I know they'll record their own messages, so from me personally, thank you so much for everything, Tom, and I wish you all the best in the future. I joined J.P. Morgan 30 years ago, and at the time I was working for another firm. And when I wrote a report and made an investment recommendation at that firm, there was usually one question I didn't want to ask because I didn't have the answer to it. Usually escaped the attention of the salespeople, escaped the attention of the clients, but there was always one person that would ask that one question that I didn't want asked. So when I came to J.P. Morgan, I was pretty happy to leave that all behind. And so I wrote a report. There was one question I didn't want asked. And the next morning, Tom Luddy at the morning meeting says, what about this? And I'm thinking to myself, here we go again. It was pretty much like that for the next 30 years. Tom would always ask the insightful question at just the right time. Uh, there were exceptions uh, as far as just the right time. Tom would uh, ask me about chloralkali pricing on Sunday afternoon and we'd spend the afternoon swapping emails about how to interpret, interpret a chloralkali pricing graph. And as far as uh, the exception to insightful questions, Tom's favorite question is always, Jim, why is the stock down? Or Jim, why is this short going up? But to wrap this up, I'd like to thank Tom for two things. Number one, thank you for making me a better investor. And the second thing is thank you for making the business fun. Happy retirement, Tom. Hi, Tom. It's good here. As you know, I've known you for uh, 30 years, over 30 years, basically. My, throughout my whole uh, professional career at JP Morgan and you taught me everything that I needed to know in this in this business but I remember the first time when uh, uh, when we met in, in London you told me the first thing you had to know is for you to get to know how to play golf okay then practice practice and I said okay let's do this and here's the result The second thing you taught me is to keep calm, to keep cool after a very bad shot. See, that's what I'm doing. Everything is fine. God damn it! Tom, you are one of the best investors that I've met in the last 30 years, if not the best. But sometimes even the best have a very short period of underperformance. Here's a scene in Paul Quincy's office. Tom. How would you explain that you underperformed in the last month? I mean, this is rather disappointing. Yes, I know, Paul. I know um, we are underperforming. But if it wasn't for Europe, we would have been uh, outperforming. I mean, Europe. I mean, Gab, what's going on in Europe? And Helge, why are the analysts not putting uh, the blow up in Europe in their numbers? Sorry, Tom. I had to mention this. I wish you a happy, happy uh, uh, retirement. I think you're still the best. And here's what I recommend you to do. Hey, Tom, we got your email at 5.07 a.m. about Broadcom. You know, thanks, Rob. You know, I was looking at these. I was looking at the Broadcom numbers, and your numbers are very low relative to the street. 
yeah, it might have something to do with fiscal year. I mean, they've got an October fiscal year, isn't it? Which is kind of strange. I mean, and what about stock-based comp? What are you doing there? Yeah, stock-based comp. I include it. I'm not sure. I think the street excludes it. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm looking at here, Rob. I mean, you, you, you got to make this comparable to the street. you got to follow the format. I mean, and what about the cash? What are you doing with amortization? Is the cash there? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, they, they, they spend a lot on CapEx. They've got a couple new headquarter buildings that are going up. They've got this big F-bar filter fab. And and I do exclude the amortization. And the street excludes the amortization. Oh, and then they've got restructuring, and so they're taking some heads out. But I think eventually the cash flow is going to equal the earnings. I mean, Rob, you got to tell the computer this stuff. I mean, the computer doesn't know. If you don't put it in, the computer's not going to know. I agree, and Tom, I really think these are. This is why we've outperformed over the years. You guys, you've asked so many great questions. It's been so great working with you for so many years, and this is why we bought Avago when we put a billion in, and now we have seven billion. Like it's been magic. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tom, for all the guidance and the thought leadership. Enjoy the retirement. So many things I can say. He's the one who hired me out of college integrity research 18, 19 years ago, and I'm so thankful to him for that. He's also the one I've learned the most from throughout these years. He has this amazing ability to put together all the different data points from all 22 of us analysts and news all around the world, put them all into the Tom machine and come up with the smartest ideas and generate the best investment conclusions. I learned so much from him. I remember going to sell side meetings where the analyst would speak for an hour, but I would learn the most from the one single question Tom would ask where he could get to the heart of the problem. He was tough. He would ask hard questions. He would make sure we did our analysis right. But after he did that, he would trust us and join in the trade with us, showing that he trusted his teammates and the process. I'm sure I'm speaking for the whole team when I say it was the greatest honor to know that Tom believed in you and trusted your opinions. As a young analyst, I gained my self-confidence that way. I would think to myself, if Tom believed in what I said, I must be doing something right. I spent my whole career working for Tom and I will miss him very dearly. I take comfort in the fact that he'll still be nearby and that we can still go to him for counsel and advice because I know I'll want to. I thank him from the bottom of my heart for these 18 years because JP Morgan won't be the same without him. Because that's what he called me. So Tom, we've been together a long time, for 20 plus years, and it goes back to when I worked outside your office in IA, and I learned about an open door policy. I could hear Jan on the phones, because you use speakerphone, give you all the train times, and then I would watch as PMs and analysts all came in to bounce ideas off you, and you missed every one of those trains. And then I've also had to learn a new language. As a trader, we talk about share as, and price, not Tom. Uh, how much have I done? Uh, you're done on 2% of your order? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't manage money like this. I, I, how many bips? I, I, it's only three bips. Tom, three bips is three million shares. Mm. And pairing. Pairing is dirty work. Um, Tom, you sent Ford and GM down at the same time, and it's for about the same amount of money. Is it paired? I, I, I don't, I don't want to pair trades. They're, they're, they're related, but they're, they're not paired. They're, they're loosely tied. I just don't want to get out of whack. Okay, so we're really translators. But what I'm really gonna miss is my partner on the dance floor at our Christmas party. And the leader of the after hours. <laughs> Tom, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss your consistency, your knowledge of stocks, and most of all, for being proud of working with JP Morgan. Thank you for teaching us all this. Bye. Good luck. Congratulations, Tom, on your impending uh, retirement. We have some funny stories uh, working with you over the years. Hermes? 
Well, I always thought of you as a man of great subtlety and wit because you laughed at my jokes. <laughs> and indeed you do, and you also created a lot of a lot of comic relief for the rest of us. I have fond uh, moments working with you over the years. I definitely remember during the great financial crisis you keeping uh, things light. I think every day you walked into the office and asked, is the world ending today? And back then it felt like it was ending every day. Um, but in all seriousness, I really enjoyed working with you and you were, I think, the only PM to ever come down to my office and sit next to me and go over a model. It was Morgan Stanley, if you don't forget, and that ended up working out pretty well. So I just want to thank for all the years where you've really provided a lot of insight and help along the way. Yeah, you've always been a, a very valuable resource, and there, there's a thing from the old Merchant Marine about how if the captain's okay, I'm okay, and if the captain is, if his hands are shaking, I'm running like hell. So that's, uh, we, we always appreciated your presence in bad times as well as good times. So he's saying you have steady hands, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations. Yep, congratulations. Hi, Tom. It's transition night. I think we might sleep here. We are. I'm already, I'm already changed. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest is wearing his It's, it's his uh, night 10 suit. p.m. <laughs> We're getting ready to go to bed here, wake up early, check on your, to make sure all the slices are good. <laughs> Guys, you have a message for Tom? The office is dead. Happy transition day. <laughs> we love your slices. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hey, Ernest. Yes, Tom. Are my trades ready? No, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm working on them right now. It's top priority. Kevin? Hey, Kevin. Is my wheelchair ready? Sure. It's top priority. Went out. Yo, what's, what's Where's up? my performance sheet for today? Oh, I'm, I'm still it's on It's top it. priority. What's happening with these trades? The prices are all screwed up. They're moving the market. Ugh. I'm going to go talk to them right now. It's been such an honor and blessing to work for you over the past 20 years. You are a true leader brilliant investor and a great mentor. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your mentorship. Without you, I couldn't be the person I am today. You taught me so many investment skills. You helped me build my confidence. You guided me through the challenges with your endless patience and wisdom. I'm so grateful you will continue to be around to offer your guidance and insights. Enjoy your new role as a vice chairman, and most importantly, enjoy your family. You always say this to me, Susan, you have two important jobs. One is to be a good PM. Another is to be a good mom. As you move to the next chapter, we wish you and your family all the best and many, many happy and healthy years ahead. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Tom.